Good evening, and welcome to a service of Compline for the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection in Rainbow City. Uh, this evening is the feast of Hilary of Poitiers. Poitiers? Uh, my French is terrible, so I know I'm saying that wrong. Uh, and before we pray, I'm going to give us a little bit of background upon our saint of the day. Hilary was uh, both Bishop of Poitiers and a doctor of the early church. And he was known as an orator, poet, and prolific writer who penned works on theology, scriptural exegesis, and some of the earliest Latin hymns. He was born in Gaul in 315 to wealthy and pagan parents after a personal spiritual journey that included studying scripture of both the Old and New Testament. He converted to Christianity and was baptized around the age of 30 with his wife and daughter. He initially declined an overwhelming nomination to a bishop's see in 350, but was finally persuaded to assume the office which he proved, proved to fill with sensitivity and skill. While he was a staunch supporter of the orthodox theology laid out at the Council of Nicaea, he pled for a merciful, a merciful response to those who were arguing against that ruling. His advocacy, unfortunately, didn't sway the emperor at all and just in instead resulted in his own exile to Phrygia. And somehow, all those centuries ago, he still managed to oversee his diocese while he was in exile, as well as penned his principal theological work on the Trinity. So remote church before remote church was a thing. Hmm, who knew? We learn, we learn something every day. Following his exile, he was invited to a gathering with, by a group that were uh, reported to be in search of a middle way, but were largely part of the detracting unorthodox group of the church. While he attended, he remained a staunch supporter of the Nicene position and the Trinitarian theology that that proclaimed. He was able to finally return to his bishopcy in either 360 or 361 and was welcomed back by both his clergy and people. From his see, he continued to advocate for the Nicene position and was swift to defend it and was um, often known to write or advocate for those who were still in detraction. He was incredibly compassionate and sensitive to the needs of his people within his diocese and was very popular among both the clergy and uh, regular communicants. One of which was named Martin, who in his own right would eventually become a bishop and later a saint. We don't know a whole lot about the end of Hillary's life, but according to Jerome, he died in Poitiers around 367. A little bit of interesting um, background on Hillary, who I had never known anything about other than his name prior to doing a little bit of research for this evening. So in order for Compline begins on page 127 of the Book of Common Prayer, or can be found at bcponline.org uh, over onto the left navigating bar under the daily offices. Let's begin. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Turning to page 129, let's recite Psalm 31 together. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. 
For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading from the Gospel according to Luke. All the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continuing in the middle of page 132. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, you raised up your servant Hillary to be a champion of the Catholic faith. Keep us steadfast in that true faith, which we professed at our baptism, that we may rejoice in having you for our father and may abide in your son and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yes, sweet girl. Apparently, 13 wants to pray with us as well. It's my turn. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Continuing at the bottom of page 134. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Be well, stay safe. God bless. Good night.